All right, welcome class, and we're going to do a video on Unit 4C, which is about savings plans and investments. Put on our tools. I do have to start saying by saying that in this section they have many great pieces of information and guidance on general investment ideas. And so I recommend reading through the whole section and seeing if you can apply any of those in your lives. The handout the homework is ba the handout is based off of the homework, which is only covers some of the topics in this uh, section. So we're gonna go through those topics now. The handout has um, begins with a savings plan formula. So we're going to talk about savings plans first. So part number one is about savings plans. Okay. It begins by describing how savings plans work. Say that you want to save seven or two hundred dollars per month in an account where the uh, APR or the annual percentage rate is 12.12% per year or 1% per month for six months. So we're going to fill in the following table as uh, similar to the one that's on page 226. Okay. So the table has um, a couple of things on it. So month one, at the end thereof, you're going to have um, the prior balance will be $0. Okay, so at the end of the month is when we're going to do our financial um, ideas. Okay, so zero balance to start. We have zero dollars in interest. And then you have the end of the month deposit, which is $200. And then you have a new balance. Okay, so that's month one. So in month two, that comes around, we start with a $200 balance. Okay. Then we're going to go to some interest calculations. So 1% on $200 is 1% times $200. That will give me $2. Okay. So I deposit another $200 into the account at the end of the month. Okay, so I'm consistently depositing. And so at the end of the month, I have $402 because uh, we have $200 from the balance from the previous month. We're going to add $2 for interest, and then we're going to add $200 more deposit. Okay. Month three. So hopefully we're seeing a pattern here. We're starting out with $402. We're going to calculate our interest of 1% on the $402. That's going to equal $4.02. And, and we're going to go ahead and then we have that in our account. We're going to add in a $200 deposit that we deposit at the end of the month again. And in the end, we have this $400 here, that $4 there, and that $200 there. So we have $606.02. Okay. Month four. So hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. We have six hundred and six dollars and two cents. We're gonna do a one percent calculation for interest. Okay, so one percent of six oh six oh two is six dollars and six cents. We're gonna add that we're gonna deposit two hundred dollars again at the end of this month. And in the bank account, we have this $600, that $6, and that $200. So we have $800, okay. 
All right, and so the pattern will continue. So you can you keep going that pattern, fill out the rest of the table on your sheet. Okay, part B. That was part A. Part B says, well, what is the formula to for the savings plan? Now we want a formula to calculate the savings plan after X number of years. Okay, doing this calculation month by month would be very tedious. Okay, and so if we have the power of mathematics, power of algebra to help us. So the amount in your account after um, Y years is equal to PMT, which we're going to call the payment that you do every month, multiplied by one plus the APR divided by the number of times you compound it per year or calculate the, your interest. Okay, we'll take all of that to the number of times you compound it per year again times the number of years. Okay, we're going to subtract one at the end. Okay, that's the, the, everything in the numerator of a fraction. And we're going to divide that by the APR and divide that by the N again. Okay, so A is going to be your accumulated savings plan. The accumulated savings in your plan and PMT is going to be the monthly payment or the payment that you do with the regular payment the amount that you deposit And then APR is your annual percentage rate, as we usually see it. And that's going to be as a decimal. And then we're going to have N is number of payments per year. And then y is number of years. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example with that. We're going to do a re retirement plan. So savings plan for retirement. We deposit a certain number of month money per month. So we're going to calculate that here. At age twenty-five, you begin to contribute your to your individual retirement account or your IRA. You deposit one hundred and fifty per month into the account. Assuming you can count on the APR of 6%, how much will you have at age 65? Okay, so the amount that we have in our account at age 65 is going to be $150. We'll start with that because that's our PMT, our payment. We're going to multiply it by this fraction, which has 1 plus the APR, which is 0 0.06. The number of times that we're going to do this payment is 12 times per month, per year. So it's times 12. And then we're going to do it to 12 power times... Uh, 40 years because our retirement we're going to start at 25 and end at 65 so that's 40 years then we're going to subtract 1 off of all of that put all of that into big brackets and divide that by the APR 0 0.06 and the number of payments 12 again okay so we have as we simplify this to the calculator number we have the 150 which we'll handle last and the inside here we're going to do our adding our 1 and our 0 0.06 uh, divided by 12. So we'll add those together. So we calculate what 0 0.06 divided by 12 is, and we get 0 0.005. Okay, so this is gonna be 1.005 because I add the 0 0.005 to the one. And I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna raise it to the 12 times 40th power, which is 480. And then I subtract one. Okay, so all of that is still in big brackets. Divide it by the 0 0.005, which is 0 0.06 divided by 12. Okay, so we have $150. Let's simplify some more. And then this, this kind of simplification is going to be estimating because I'm going to do my 1.005 to the 480. So I'm going to use estimation equal e approximately equal to symbol. Now 1.005 to the 40th power is about 10.96.
and then I can still have my subtract 1, and I still have my divide by 0 0.005. That's approximately equal to the 150 multiplied by 9.96 divided by 0 0.005, which is approximately equal to um, 1,000. 991.49 so we did that on my calculator divide 9.96 by 0 0.005 and then that's going to be approximately equal to uh, 298,723 dollars and 61 cents what a great nice retirement right in this video, we're going to continue with that first example, so we're doing 1D. So we're on the next page of our handout. Um, it says, how much do you end up depositing and how much interest do you earn? So over the 40 years, we, divide, we do 150 a month. Okay, so we have $150 a month for 40 years. Well, for 12 months per year. And so what that means is that we're going to do $150 times 12 times 40. And when we do that, we get uh, $72,000. So you're actually only contributing $72,000 into this retirement account. Because it sits there and the account bankers use it and everything, they'll pay you the interest. Um, have about and they invest in stocks and bonds and all this other stuff they will pay you about six percent interest hopefully and you get to earn the rest by interest so our original amount um so this is the amount that we paid how much did we earn by interest is we take our total which was two hundred and ninety eight thousand seven twenty three sixty one cents and subtract off our seventy two thousand dollars Okay. And when we do that, we get two hundred and twenty-six thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars sixty-one cents. Okay, so this much money is paid by interest. Okay, so that's a nice deal. In part number two, we have planning ahead with savings plans. So, in a similar application of this formula and this idea of a savings plan is to save for college. So when your child is born, you set a goal of building $75,000 in the college fund in 18 years in the future by ranking regular end of the month deposits. Assuming that there's this account gives an APR of 4%, calculate how much you should deposit monthly. Okay. So we're going to take our savings plan. So part A, part I, part A, part I, is we take our savings plan and solve it for the payment amount. Okay, so when we do that, we get the payment amount um, of is equal to the uh, the amount that we want multiplied by the APR over n divided by one plus the APR over n number of payments and your rate. Okay, to the n, oops, to the n times y power, subtract 1. Okay, and so in our example for part 2, we want to calculate the monthly payment. So we need $75,000 in a future in 18 years. So we have this account that will help us with interest. And so we pay, um, so our payment amount for every month is equal to the $75,000. That's the amount we want. Multiply by the 0 0.04, the average annual percentage rate, divided by the 12 monthly payments per year, all over 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12, okay, raised to the number of payments again was 12. The amount of time was 18 years, and we subtract 1 off. Okay, so we did not go into the derivation of this formula. You can read that in your book. What we have here now is uh, simplifying this uh, in, in this equation here, this expression. We have 75,000 times now 0 0.04 divided by 12. 
is about 0 0.0033 three going on forever. So I'm just going to write that much there. Divided by 1.003 going on forever, threes, to that. To the 12 times 18 happens to be 216. Subtract 1. Okay. All right, so that's approximately equal to... On the top, when we do 0 0.003 repeating of $75,000, we get, oops, excuse me, we get uh, exactly 250 bucks. Okay, so 0.04 divided by 12 twelfths of 75,000 is 250. And we divide that by uh, 2.05, which is what we get when we take 1.0033333 1 to the 216th power. Subtracting one, and that's going to be equal to 250 divided by 1.05. And there's lots more in my calculator, but I haven't written them down, so I keep that in my calculator. And when I do that, I get the approximately 237 dollars and 65 cents per month. Okay. So how much do you end up ending on how so when you do this college fund to end up with seventy five thousand in eighteen years, how much do you actually pay into that and how much is actually interest? Okay, so that's an interesting calculation. So we do part number three, Roman numeral three. So we end up depositing uh, we're gonna deposit two hundred and thirty seven dollars and sixty five cents per month. So twelve months per year times eighteen years. So you actually end up paying uh, 51 out of your pocket, $51,332.40. And then the rest of it we earn, and then we just take our uh, 75000 subtract off the 51000 oops, $51,332. And we get um, twenty-three thousand and six sixty-seven and sixty cents dollars and sixty cents. Okay, so this is how much is to interest. That's how much you pay, and you actually get twenty-three thousand dollars interest. So that's a pretty good deal. Okay. Part B is retirement income, okay? So we want to think about how much we need to pay each month to have a nice retirement, okay? Or a retirement. So what we do is we're going to do, you would like to retire in 30 years, so part B. You'd like to retire in 30 years from now and draw an income of 75,000 per, per year forever. How much do you need to deposit each month in order to do this? Now the account that you're going to get is a 7% 7 7 uh, APR, so you want to hope it's that. Retirements are investments in stocks and bonds and a bunch of things, and it's not always the same constant rate of return because of the economy goes up and down. So we're just going to assume that about 7% each year you can get on interest. So since APR is 7%, you need to have 7% of some amount in your account that will pay you Seventy-five thousand dollars. So seven percent of, so that seventy-five thousand dollars needs to be seven percent of something. Okay, so that's why we do this. Seventy-five thousand dollars equals uh, seven percent of some amount. Okay, and so in order to solve for our amount, we just take um, our seventy-five. We divide both sides by 0 0.07. So we have seventy-five thousand dollars divided by 0 0.07, and when we divide that, we get. Uh, uh, over a million here, so we have we need to have one million seventy one thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars and fifty seven cents in our account. Well, okay, so that's a pretty big amount. Uh, we need to pay some amount for thirty years in order to do that. Uh, so let's see what the amount will be. So the PM we're going to use our PMT formula. Oops, PMT. The payment we need to make each month is equal to the amount that we want, which is our one million seventy-one thousand four twenty-eight dollars and 
57 cents. Okay, and we're going to back that up just a ten. Multiply that by the rate, seven percent, by our monthly payments, twelve so per year. And then we're going to do our one plus our rate again, divide by our number of payments per year, to the number of payments per year, which is again twelve. And how many years are we going to do this? We're going to pay into this uh, retirement account for thirty years. And we're going to subtract 1 at the end of that. Okay. And so now we have to simplify. And so we just keep our keep our million dollars here. Uh, when we multiply by set 0 0.075 by 12 is 0 0.0583 repeating. Okay, so we're just going to write point zero zero five eight three, and the 3 repeats on forever. So you need to verify that with your calculator. And same so thing with this here down here. We're going to do 1.00583 repeating to the 12 times 30 is 360. Subtract off 1. And so that's equal to... When I multiply the numerator, the one million dollars times the point zero zero five eight three, I get exactly six thousand two hundred and fifty bucks. Okay, I'm going to divide that by when I take the one to the three hundred sixtieth power, one in a little bit, I get eight sixteen eight point one six, and I'm going to subtract one from that. So that's equal to six two five zero divided by seven point one six. Now the seven point one six is a big number in my calculator still. And I'm going to set that, and that's going to be about equal to uh, $878.24 per month. Okay, so if you want to have a million dollars when you are retired, you need to put in about $800 a month, almost $900. And if that's, that's assuming that set, you get 7% interest rate. Okay, so for the third page of our uh, handout, part number three, we're going to talk about the book. I'll, the book turns to next total and annual return. Okay, so what part A is? What is the total return on investment? So a total return is a percent change in the investment value from beginning to end. Okay, so we have the percent. So this is total return. Put my tools here. Yeah. Total return is the um, percent change in the investment value. So when you start depositing and when you finish collecting out on the uh, interest. So part B is a formula. So what's the formula for total return? So we know about principal and the amount already. So the total return is the amount that you collect, subtracting off the principal, divided by the principal, times 100%. Okay, so it's going to be as a percent. Okay. So the annual return is the next topic. Okay, what is an annual return? Well, it's just the annual percentage yield. And uh, in other words, the APY, which we already know about from last section. Okay, so what is the formula for APY? Okay, so, or the annual return. And it, the annual return is an average that you get back on the investment. Okay, that's equal to um, the amount that you have at the end divided by the principal which you start with to the one over y power subtract one. Okay, so where these formulas come from, we know about the total return, but not much about the annual return or even the payment formula or the savings formula. But that'll be too deep to go into for this section. 
Well, let's go ahead and, and apply this. Okay, so part E. Now, part E, I didn't leave much room on the handout, so I kind of like squished everything in there, but it should still be readable. In 2002, you purchased 100 shares of Netflix for 100 bucks. Okay, so in the year 2002, Netflix shares varied from between above and, and below a dollar a share. But since they've become quite popular um, and they're doing very well as a company, their shares nowadays, 18 years later, are $363 a share. Okay, and so you want you have now 100 shares of Netflix, which is worth $36,300. Okay, so what's the total return and the annual return on your investment? Okay, so the total return on a Netflix investment okay, is going to be the amount that you sell your shares for, $36,300, and subtracting off the principal how much it costs in the beginning, which is just 100 bucks, dividing that by the principal, which is $100. Then you multiply that by 100%. Okay. Now to turn into a percent. Now this is what's the crazy part is that the number that we have here is a very big percentage because all I'm doing is subtracting $100 in my numerator. So that's equal to uh, $36,200 divided by $100. Oops. Okay, times 100%. And when I do that, I divide by 100, and what we get is 362 times 100%. Okay, and when we do that, we get 36200%. Okay, so your in total return is over 36,000%. So it was an incredibly smart investment if you were able to do that way back in 2002. But unfortunately, we don't even know that Netflix was going to do so well. So making investments in small companies is a bit risky. Well, what's the annual return? What's the average percent return every year for the last 18 years? Okay, and so what we do for that one is we take our $36,300, our the amount that we have in our account, divided by the principal, which was only 100 bucks. Take it to the 1 over y power. In this case, our y was 18 years. Okay, so the 1 over 18 power, subtract off 1. So that is equal to, um, let me divide that by 100, we do 363 to the 1 over 18 power, subtract 1. Now 1 over 18 power, three, sorry, 360, 363 to the 1 over 18 power is 1.3872. Subtract off 1, I get 0 0.3872. Writing that as a, um, as a percent is going to be 38.72%. So each year, your return was 38%, which is a huge amount of return because most investments are around 4 and 5% return. Okay. okay, welcome to the last video, number 4, section 4 of our handout. Now here we're going to talk about types of investments, and here's where the book goes into a lot of detail, but there isn't homework on it, so I'm going to go briefly over this. Stocks, bonds, and cash investments are three types of investments that people do these days. Now stocks and stocks are historically um, pay payments of shares of companies, okay, and that's usually the best um, type of investment because on average it has the highest amount of return, about 6.4% historically. Uh, bonds are uh, buying money from promise notes from the government, and those have a, a 2% uh, return. And then cash investments usually about have a 0.8% return. Okay. Investing into anything, really, um, that's worth money. So an historical investment example uh, is that in 1900, um, a relative of yours invested $200 in each of the three investment options, not knowing which would give the best return. How much would each have earned by the end of 2016? And so we use data from uh, page 234 in the book um, for our APRs for stocks and bonds and cash investments. So we are going to use a compound interest formula for one year, compound year to calculate this uh, estimate. Okay. 
So in part B, part I, so Roman numeral one, we are going to, our, our relative is going to invest $200 into stocks in 1900. Okay. So the amount that will be in 2016 is equal to the $200 multiplied by one plus the uh, 0.064, the interest rate, to the 116th power because it's been 116 years since 1900 for where we're calculating. All right, so if we remember that this formula was like the A equals P times one, one plus APR as a decimal to the Y power, okay? So this is our compound interest. Com interest is calculated um, e once a year, so just yearly. Okay, and when we simplify this, we're gonna have $200 times 1.064 to the 116th power, which is about equal to $200 times, now 1.064 to the 116th power, we calculated in our calculator, one, it took me 1334.22, and that's approximately equal to 266,844 dollars and 86 cents, okay? So this is why stocks are have been have been a relatively good option because they have the highest APR. Now, that's what financial planners traditionally invest in, but it's important to remember and the book talks about this that um past performance doesn't predict future performance, okay? And so we might not get a 6.4% return rate in the next 100 years on stocks. Okay. But let's take a look at what happens when we invest into bonds. Okay. So the amount that we have for bonds is equal to $200 from deposit into in 1900 multiplied by 1 plus now the bonds APR was only 2%, so 0 0.02 to the 116th power. So if the APR is only 2%, we're going to uh, predict estimate that we will earn less than 200 thousand dollars because two percent is much less than six percent okay so how much do we actually earn two hundred dollars times 1.02 to the 116th power which when we do 1.02 to the 116th power in our calculator we get um 9.945 and then when we multiply that by two hundred dollars we get one thousand nine hundred eighty nine dollars and seven cents Okay. Well, let's say that our relative invested $200 into cash investments. So we have our the amount that it will be today in 2016 equal to $200 times 1 plus 0 0.008 to the 116th power because it's 0.8%. And that's $200 times 1.008 to the 116th. And which is equal to um, $200 times, now this right here, 1.8008 to 116 is 2.52. Okay, and then we have uh, $504, current value of $504.02. Okay, so we can see which investment is the most, has been the most successful historically. Okay, and this is like, a thousand times as much this is about nine ten times as much and this is about twice as much so you can see, use these um, from investments from the um, interest to calculate to see how much times it goes your money goes up all right well that's all we have um, that should get you through the homework and hopefully you enjoyed this lesson have a great day